Oh, yeah. Coral uh, from Capricorn Conservation Council has suggested that Clive Palmer's mine is an issue. Uh, she's continuing to work on that. We all did some work around that issue recently where there was a decision had to be made by the uh, state government where for the first time ever, uh, a mine was rejected by the Queensland government. That's That was pretty amazing that we were- Very Susan Lay on to it. Yeah, so I don't know what her, where it's at, but anyway, if you're, if you're interested in that issue, look up Capricorn Conservation Council in Rockhampton and get on board with them and see whether you can help. Uh, anyone else um, got any, you can put something in the chat if you don't feel like piping up and unmuting yourself and speaking. Could I pipe up with something, please? Maxine Godley here. Maxine. Yep. Hi. I didn't have any questions prepared, but you asked if there's some issues. Um, from about April, uh, I've been trying to get in touch with um, people to, uh, who could assist fire brigades with Indigenous burning. And uh, I got in touch with fire sticks. I've forgotten where they are now. And they gave me details for reef catchment and a, a lady there, but I've never been able to make contact. Doesn't matter how many phone calls I leave for this uh, lady, I won't mention her name and even uh, personal messages through her um, reception area, nothing. And uh, also in uh, the wet Sundays, there's a fire officer as part of reef catchments there. I've sent messages uh, and phone, um, tried to phone uh, through, through that as well. And especially, you know, through the uh, Indigenous weeks and things, it would have been lovely to have been able to make contact <coughs> and to assist with them. Um, um, I'm a member of a fire brigade here uh, in the area. And I really want, I've been trying for five years, I can tell you that, but, well, you know. Um, can we, maybe um, if you want to contact uh, like uh, me or someone else here at the environment, okay. so that Maxine, you know, like then okay. I'm sure we can like, I don't know, try. You know, the more, more voices, the better. Um, yep. Also, I was going to suggest, Maxine, that you just um, Google recapments and join, join that. You can become a member and it doesn't cost. Yeah. And that way have... you'll get notifications and you can go to their meetings. <laughs> I have Googled them to death, to be honest, and that's where I found my details. And I was referred to them by Fire Sticks, another organization um, to do with Indigenous burning. But I can't tell you the trouble I've been to and the com complex emails that I've sent through to people copied from one to the next to the next. I was just disappointed because, uh, you know, our fire brigades do a lot of damage when we do hazard reduction burns. And I'd love to have Indigenous people coming along and saying, do it early, do it cool. That's what we really should be doing. I, I understand what we should be doing. Yep. Okay, well, look, um, we'll do what we can to see whether that can progress. Uh, like, so that, I'll email, that would be good. Mm -hmm. I'll email okay. you uh, yeah. like that. That'd be great. If you can do that, that'll remind me. Otherwise, I'll forget by tomorrow. <laughs> um, anyone else got an issue that they think that, you know, we might be able to help with? Or if not, we can... Uh, well, I think and, Sorry, yes, yeah. It's Faye here Faye. from Red Sunday Conservation Council. Thanks mm. for giving us a plug. As mm. you said, we've only just um, been going for about 12 months now officially. So Maxine, if um, Peter could put you in contact with us and we can certainly try and contact the local officer here because we have trouble here with burning by the Parks and Wildlife. Uh, people, were, we were seriously affected by smoke just a couple of weeks ago from a supposed controlled burn which was set up the day before these huge winds came through. Seems a bit funny if you're dealing with parks and wildlife. Uh, we also have a big problem with high rise, as you know. So there's a high rise and um, we're trying to get information about significant trees because the trees we're losing here, you know, big gums, which are habitat for fauna. Um, you know, our council does nothing. 
So um, that's our, one of our big ones at the moment to try and get a significant tree register and make it more difficult for these developers to just go in and bulldoze everything. So uh, Maxine, I look forward to Peter Puddick's in touch and thank you very much thank for the Education Council for you, this um, uh, terrific forum. Thank you. Okay, Faye, would you be able to type the web address for the with Sunday Conservation Council into the chat for this meeting? Yes, if, if I'll you do, can that. do that. And that will, and then um, I'll share that chat with everyone as well, like, so we can or, or any, the relevant stuff anyway. I'll put it to everyone. How's that? Yeah, do that. And then, but I'll also email it out as well. Um, yeah. Uh, any any other? Issues that you think that you know could be shared amongst us. That, uh, that something that you. I'll tell you what. Lynn and I we used to go and plant trees out at Dumbleton uh, back when I first arrived in Mackay in 1993, and we'd do backbreaking work, digging holes, drag, carrying buckets of water up from the river, slashing weeds, doing all that sort of stuff. And then one day the bush fire brigade came along and and put a fire through the whole. <laughs> It was, Sorry, it's not the oh, it was, yeah, I know. Like, the, uh, so you know, like the trees were pretty well established by then. They weren't little, little tiny seedlings or anything, but they were. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty sad. It breaks my heart. Carol's trying to have a word. Carol, yes. Yeah, Carol. I hope I can keep my dog quiet. Um, <laughs> look, I just, I'm, I'm a long way away. I'm down in South Australia, and uh, I just want to um, say that here they've already the indigenous people here what few remain, uh, they, 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 they've warned us that the days of slow burns are over. Um, there's too little season between the wet season and the dry season in your territory. And down here, we virtually have no spring. We go straight from winter into summer now. Um, mm. Already the sun's got a, a kick to it, um, even though we've only had the first few you know, days that are like spring, it's already got a kick to it. And, and the spring flush, everything just grows like crazy. And there's no way you can burn everywhere quickly enough, slowly enough to have the desired effect. So that was a great dream and it could have been done 50 years, 100 years ago, but we've, we've lost that opportunity. And with climate change and lack of change and lack of knowledge, um, you know, double whammy there, it's, it's gonna be too hard to do. And they're already talking here about slashing all the roadside vegetation. And in our poor old dead dry state, in some cases, that's all we've got left is the roadside vegetation. Um, hundreds of thousands of acres of Mallee has been destroyed. And um, as far as water goes, I'd just like to um, ring, a, ring the bells of warning. Down here, uh, we've only got one major river, um, several, sorry, several big rivers, but one major river. And it's so constrained by dams and weirs that it, it's, uh, it's really half dead. It's dying. We've got people like Barnaby Joyce now, Deputy, Prem Deputy Prime Minister, who's declared we can go to hell. We're not gonna get the water that was promised us in the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. That water is needed to push two tons of salt a year out of that river, which is coming down from all the states. It collects salt on the way, collects, mm. it collects sewage, it collects um, all sorts of gray water and absolute crap. And not to mention the pesticides and herbicides from farming operations. And the only way we can get rid of that is to flush it out to sea and now Barnaby Joyce says we can go to hell. We don't need, South Australia doesn't need fresh water. I don't know what he thinks we can live on down here, but um, the more dams you have, the more problems you're going to have. And, and it, it interferes with the native fish. They've now discovered that there are many native fish that need to actually experience part of their life cycle in the ocean. Um, down here, Congolia is one, um, not to mention eels and, and, and other things like that. But there are many native fish that have a connection with marine life as well. And they need to be able to get up and down river systems, and of course, dams, even with fish ladders, not all the fish can access those ladders. And they're discovering in North America that some of the fish are getting smashed to smithereens because the fish ladders don't suit their, their size or their body type, and they're getting beaten up um, and dying trying to ac you know, use the fish ladders. So they need to get this right. This, we don't need more dams. We need more water. We, we don't need to send water where it doesn't belong. Because what happens then is you get settlements and people where they shouldn't be, and it just is a never ending, it's like a dog chasing its tail. You're never gonna solve the problem. We've, we've directed a whole lot of the Snowy Mountain Rivers, Snowy Mountain Scheme, directed a whole lot of rivers west, which should have flowed east. And if you go to university now, they tell you in first year uni, that was the most stupid thing. We, brilliant engineering scheme, 
fail, fail, fail as far as environment goes. So it wouldn't have been done today on environmental grounds. So we've got to start remembering the past and looking at what we did and learning from it because things are yeah. That's, that's great to have that, you know, first-hand experience from South Australia. And I think we, we can take that message from you, Carol, and maybe we'll talk to you um, later. Yeah, like about, you know, like just having a person speak about what they know, about their experience of having a, a, a river that is, you know, over-extracted, uh, not cared for basically you know like and you know like and the indigenous people have been done in uh, in terms of the murray darling basin plan and will be you know with your honor and others as well um so yeah no that's that's really good i'll talk to you as well and uh we can maybe uh, work on putting together a little videos or something like that talking about that you know um yeah so anyone else on any other topics you know it could be you've got uh how do you how do you protect the local street trees? I don't know. Whatever there's there's all sorts of things that. You know. But otherwise, we can just uh, sort of call it a day and say thanks very much for coming along. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I uh, hope that you feel a little bit more informed. Uh, and uh, we really do want you to take some of those actions. There, there's a few of them, not many. But you know, like it's it gets the ball rolling, and uh, you know, gets you gets you warmed up, get the juices flowing, just get in there and start doing some work. And look, one of the things I thought about was, you know, these online Zoom demonstrations. What good are they? These politicians take notice of them. You know, like they do look at the numbers that turn up to those sorts of events. And yeah, it's really important that you 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 show up at something like that. So yeah, get along to the um, Wongan and Jangalangu rally on the thirtieth. That'll be really important. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> okay. What's the what's the uh...